friends. So I have had the same basic question um, like three times in as many days. And so I thought I would jump on here to make a quick video to answer it. The question is more or less, how can I use Affinity Designer to plan placement of furniture in my house, room, whatever. So um, I wasn't really planning to make a video, hence the no makeup and um, no pre-planning and thrown together video that will not really be edited. Um, but I hoped that I can quickly answer this. Now, I have had a trial run because I just recorded this entire video without audio. And so now I'm going to try again with audio. Um, so hopefully this works out um, because it is already after 11 and I'm ready to go to bed pretty soon. So I'm going to try this one more time and we'll see what happens. Last time it was about 15 minute video. So here's hoping. All right, so I'm going to switch to where you can see um, my screen and I'm going to open up Affinity Designer. So Affinity Designer is a vectoring program much like Adobe Illustrator, um, but Adobe Illustrator and all Adobe products are limited to a 200 by 200 um, artboard. Now, I have that as a preset here because usually what I do with Affinity Designer is I um, either create, which has only happened once, or modify um, sewing patterns in order to fit my body. I'm going to go double check that you can hear me. Okay, should be working. All right, so I usually use this to modify um, sewing patterns to fit. It's called pattern adjusting. And so whenever I do that, I'm going to eventually export it and open it up in a PDF reader like Adobe Reader. And so I don't want it to be bigger than Adobe can read. Um, sometimes you're going to want to do that with your final plan, in which case um, you may want to start out with a workspace that is only as big as you can export. Um, but one thing that is honestly better um, about Affinity Designer than Adobe Illustrator, other than the price, let me quickly talk about that. Um, Affinity Designer was recently on sale. I do not think it is anymore. When I bought it, it was $25 because it was on sale. Um, it can... And recently there was a sale and they do it periodically. So you can look for those. It's about $50 when it's not on sale. There is also an iPad version, which is $10 when it's on sale or $20 when it's not. Um, the iPad version does not have everything that the desktop version has. Um, it's useful in some ways, but you can't be as precise with it. So I, I, without doing some workarounds, so I'm not sure if it's the best choice for this particular application, but it's also half the price. So you know, do what you want to there. Um, but going back to what I was saying, um, one thing that is so much better about Affinity Designer than Adobe Illustrator is you have basically limitless artboard size. There probably is some sort of limit. I haven't found it yet. So I'm going to make this and I'm going to pretend like I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a room that's like 20 by 20. So I'm going to make my artboard just slightly bigger than that. So I'm going to make my artboard 25 feet. So right now this is set to, to work in inches, but when I type feet, it'll convert it for me um, by, let's do 30 feet. And um, so it automatically realized, hey, that's a portrait size page. If I didn't mean to do that, if I really wanted it to still be landscape, I can just click it and it'll switch it right here for me and solve that. I can leave this in inches or I can switch it to feet, but as you just saw, if you only have feet and you type in feet, it'll accept that. If you only have inches and type in inches, it will accept that and it'll convert it for you. So I'm just going to leave it in inches. That's usually what I work in for patterns. So I'm going to hit create down here. And there was a little preview of what I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, so now I've got a blank space. And I'm going to add to this my room, which I'm going to make um, 16 feet by, well, actually, no. Let's make it um, 20 feet by 16 feet. Oops, and that 20, 20 feet by 16 feet. Cooperate with me here. There we go. All right. So um, there's my room. And I can use this move tool right here to put this wherever I want to. I mentioned that I use 
Adobe usually for um, adjusting patterns. I have several videos on how I do that. In those videos, I go in a little bit more depth on how to use several of these tools over here. I am going to fly through them tonight. Um, but in addition to the videos that I've made, there are tons, tons, tons of videos out there. Um, some very, very good videos that I use to learn how to use Adobe, or I'm sorry, how to use Affinity Designer um, that I would totally recommend that will teach you very in-depth how to use this program. And so I don't feel like I know enough to do that. I'm just going to quickly show you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Um, and you can watch those other videos to really get a good grasp of what you can do here in Affinity Designer. One thing you might want to do is use the stroke function to make the walls of your house um, as big as you want to. Now, as far as I know, I haven't actually tried this before. Let's say that our walls are six, or I'm sorry, are four inches. Yeah, you can. You can type four inches there. And now I've got my two by fours um, there around the edge of my room. So that's pretty cool. Um, I wasn't sure if you could type inches in there the same way that you can down here, but you can. So um, now I've got my room. Let me add, actually, no, let me go back over here. I'm going to click on color up here, not because I'm going to do anything with color, but because that gives me more space in the layers tab. Over here with stroke, it takes up so much space that it is hard to work over here. I'm going to name this object my craft room. And then I'm going to click off of it. And I'm going to use this button right here to add another layer. And I'm going to call this layer Furniture. And I'm going to make sure that this one stays on top of Craft Room because the layer that is on top shows up on top. Um, if I were to move it below, here, let me just show you. I'm going to add a piece of furniture right here. Um, and I am going to just quickly show you what I mean. If I take the furniture layer and I move it below the craft room layer, you can see that that object is still there, but it's hiding below the craft room. But when furniture is on top of craft room, then the objects are on top of craft room. So um, quick thing to do there. I'm going to go back to my stroke. Um, well, I thought I was. There we go. I'm going to go back to my stroke. I'm going to make this zero. I'm going to go to the color and I'm going to make it blue. And so now I have this blue object, and, and right here I'm going to say that it is um, 60 inches wide by 36 inches tall, and that is my sewing table. And I'm going to place it over here, and then um, right here, I can actually type here that this is, oops, this is my sewing table, but I probably, probably am not going to want to look through my layers to see what it's labeled every time, right? So I'm going to use the frame text tool to make myself a text box and I'm going to type in it sewing table and then as you can see it's very very tiny I'm going to hit I'm, I'm I haven't touched anything all I've done is type I'm going to hit control a on my keyboard and then right here I am going to say um, like 800 points and now that made it pretty close I'm going to up that even further a thousand points yep that feels pretty good and I'm going to make my white writing white so that I can see it better. All right. So now this says it's my sewing table. But if I want to go move my sewing table, um, the, the words stayed there. So control Z undoes. That's a very important shortcut to know. Another important shortcut is to hold down control and roll with your um, scroll bar in the middle of the mouse. And that just goes in and out zooms in and out. But anyway, so I have got the sewing table uh, rectangle highlighted. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to click on the sewing table words. They're now both highlighted. I know they are because I can see them both right here. And I'm going to use control G to group those together. And now when I move one, they both move. And I can do that to create um, all of my pieces of furniture in my room. Here, let me make another one really quick. Um, my cutting table is... Um, it's you know, uh, just to show you how I can do this. It is uh, three feet by five feet. Let's say um, it's actually not, but but uh, <laughs> we're just going with it for this. 
Um, anyways, that tells me it converted it to inches for me. Um, you, as long as you type in the feet there, it will convert it for you. And I'm going to zoom out and switch to my move tool. And I'm going to move this guy over here. I can add words just the same. Um, when I add the words for this one, I'm going to write cutting uh, table. And, um, oh no, it's the wrong way, right? Easy to fix. I can grab this guy and do it, or I can just go right here and type 90, and that will turn it for me. And then I'm going to make sure I've got both those highlighted and group them, and now they will move together. Um, so let me also show you, um, I like to add in the permanent fixtures, such as the doors and windows, because you're going to be planning around those, right? So a door is 32 inches wide and let's say that it is four inches tall which will fit perfectly over our um, wall here and then we can add a, also a door swing if we click on the circle and we hold down the shift key and draw it it will draw it as a perfect circle we can also tell it that we want it to be um Want the radius to be 32 so we want the total to be 64 right uh, that should be right and now we've got a couple different options here of how we can do this but i am just going to um, click convert to curves which will give me some nodes to work with i'm going to use my node tool and i am going to uh, i don't know why i right clicked there that was not what i wanted to do i'm going to delete that node um actually undo. I'm going to tell this right here to break right there. Um, and then I'm going to tell this one to break right there. And then I'm going to delete that half. And now I've got a half circle. And this half circle I can make um, more opaque. And then this can be my door swing. Let me rotate it. Um, oh, 180 was not right. Why did I do that? Let's rotate it 90, um, which is not correct. I need that opposite. So negative 90. Um, and now there's my door swing and I can place that right here and I can use the arrow keys on my, um, keyboard to minutely adjust it if I want to do that. And then I can, uh, highlight the door with it and I can group those together and there is my door, including my door swing, uh, to be placed wherever. If you are wanting to make sure that it is placed, you know, a certain amount of room from this corner, um, you can click on that guy and then click on this guy. Oops, hold on. Click on this guy and then, um, nope, hold on. I've done this before. How do you do this? I can't remember. Um, okay, there is a way to make it notice how far you are from the edge of something but I for the life of me can't remember how to do that right now um, as it is 11 20 and that's not something I normally do um, a quick workaround is you can make yourself a line um, if I hold on the shift key it will make a straight line and I can um, go back over here to the move tool and now I can tell it that I want this line to be um, well, it says it's 23.78, whatever. So let's say that it's actually um, 26 inches from my corner to my door. And I'm probably going to go make my stroke pretty thick so that I can see it. Um, and I'm going to kind of place it in the corner here. And then I can grab this guy and I can scoot him over. And there, now my door is placed where it needs to go. And oh no, my sewing table was too close. So I'm going to have to shift it over a little bit for that to be correctly placed in the room. And then I can take this line and I usually just use it over and over again, just typing in the new um, length or you can delete it and make a new one when you need it. Um, another thing you can do is pull in guidelines from the rulers. Um, and that can be helpful if you, like, say I want something directly across from that sewing table. Um, you know, I want the cutting table to be directly across from it. And now they're lined up. Um, and then you just drag it off into oblivion to get rid of it. Okay, I think that 
that's the basics of it. Oh, one other thing um, is that the reason I used these layers and these groups is because that allows you to turn things off and on. So um, I want to make sure my cutting table is here in the furniture group. And um, I can make a new layer for, oh, actually, no, let's not make a layer for it. Let's put the door and door swing in the craft room um, <clears throat> as a permanent fixture of the craft room. Uh, that did cause a problem with making that difficult to see. So maybe we make this guy five inches tall instead. And then we move him. Oops. Move him back to where he goes. Yeah, that was a bad idea um, because it's not going to show up correctly. So maybe what I need to do then is make a new layer that will be um, doors and windows. And we will get this group out of here and move it over here. And um, that can go underneath, whoops, undo that. That can either be underneath furniture or above furniture. That won't really matter much. So, all right, anyways, um, you know, once you've got all your permanent fixtures attached, then your, your furniture, you can click on and off. Your craft room, you can click on and off. Your doors and windows, you can click on and off. Um, this is our house, and this is how I planned where all of our furniture would go in this house. Um, I, as you can see, that does say coffin. It is a, a piece of furniture that is vaguely shaped like a coffin, um, and we use it for storage and a coffee table. And my aunt used to have it, and she called it the coffin, and so that is what it is permanently called. It's not an actual coffin. Anyway, um, people always seem to notice that. Uh, but you can see how I um, did something very similar to set out my room and it actually does not look like this anymore um, because I have different furniture now than I did when I first started but you know these guys are my windows um, there's a, the, all the doors that come into the building or into the room and then I was able to put my furniture where I wanted it to know that it would all fit the same thing with everything else you know with the kitchen I just sort of laid out there's the pantry um, you know, I didn't get super detailed with it, but laid out the permanent parts of it. And then I was able to um, see right here. Um, that's all my cabinets and stuff. And then I was able to work with the, the furniture that would go there. So um, I did that for this whole house and how we would um, have everything, you know, planned out when we moved into it. And it made it really easy to just... Um, move in, I could, I sent, I literally, literally sent a PDF of that to the guys that were helping us move, which was just family. Um, and so they kind of knew where things were going. And um, even though they might not put it exactly where I wanted it, I knew it would fit. And so I was able to fix it um, after we moved in. And it gave everybody a general idea of what we were doing. Um, and so it, it was really, really helpful. I also used it to plan out um, a a entire house plan for what I'm hoping we build um, in the future and so so many things you can do with this um, super 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 helpful and my one limitation with affinity designer is that it will not measure a curved line like I could not tell you the length of that curved line not such a big deal when you're using it for furniture placement kind of a big deal sometimes when you're using it for pattern adjusting um, when you need to like measure the arm side and the sleeve cap and make sure they're going to fit together or whatever it is. Uh, there are some workarounds, definitely things you can do kind of the way I did that line earlier. But yeah, that is, um, that is in a nutshell how I use Affinity Designer to plan out furniture placement. I hope that that answers the questions that I've gotten. Um, I hope this video is not too rambly and long. If you want to know more about using Affinity Designer for pattern adjustments, check out my other Affinity Designer videos. If you want to learn more about Affinity Designer in general, seriously, search it on YouTube. There are so many really great courses that will send you all the way through um, what you can do in Affinity Designer. Thanks for watching.